So if you wanted to achieve this effect, how would you do it? To do it manually, you could set all these to animate, and then go through and offset each of their keyframes like this. And that's fine, but it becomes really tedious and time consuming once you have a lot of objects. Many Blender users would say you could also use animation nodes, which is a really feature dense add-on that allows you to do this and a lot more. But I haven't really started to learn about that too much. And if all you want to do is offset keyframes, there's a much easier way. There's this free add-on called Commotion, and it's made by M. Rachinsky, and you can find it on GitHub. Link is in the description. If you want to follow along, make sure you download and install this first. We're going to be making something similar to this scene right here. And we're only going to be using some basic features from this add-on. I might make another video explaining how to use all of the other features that Commotion has. Let me know in the comments if that's something you'd like. All right, let's get started. So here we are in Blender 2.91. I'm just going to start setting the scene up. So I'm going to Shift A to add a plane right here. And then actually the next thing I'm going to do is set up the camera. So I have my camera parented to this empty. I'm just going to press zero to look through it and just set it up. So we look from the top a little and zoom in. I basically just want this uh, plane to fill the screen. All right, so that should be good. Then I'm going to select the plane right here and control four to add a subdivision surface modifier right here. Then I'm going to go uh, Shift Z to view and wireframe and go to the modifier properties right here. I'm going to turn off optimal display. That way we can see all the topology right here and switch to simple so it goes back to being plain. Then just so it's not a bunch of rectangles, I'm going to add a decimate modifier and turn the ratio. It's on collapse right now. I'm going to turn the ratio just down to 0.5. That way we get a little more, you know, like random shapes right here. I'm going to look back through the camera. And if you want these to be smaller, you can just turn your uh, your subdivision surface modifier up a little higher. All right, so that should be good. And then I'm going to add an edge split modifier and turn the edge angle all the way down to zero. And this is basically just making it so each face is not connected to the next one. Then I'm going to add a smooth modifier and I'm just going to play with this factor until they're the distance away from each other that I want. So I'm going to keep them pretty close, like right here. And I'm going to go back into solid view. All right, and then I want to give these some thickness with the solidify modifier right here. And I'm just going to change this to, say, like 0.2. It's pretty good. And if you want to add more smoothness or something like that to this, you can with like a bevel modifier. But just so it runs fast on my computer, I'm going to leave it like this. And then I'm going to apply all of the modifiers. And if you don't see this up here, you just have to uh, turn it on under preferences, go to the add-ons and type in uh, modifier tools right here and you can just uh, check that. So I'm just going to apply all of those. Make sure this is in its own collection right here because the next thing we're going to do is go into edit mode, select everything and press P and separate by loose parts. So you want to make sure it's in its own collection. So that way uh, all of these are organized when it uh, separates all of them. And right now, all of these have the same origin point, and we don't want that. So we're going to um, go back into object mode here, make sure all of them are selected, and right click, set origin, origin to center of mass. And that'll reset all of the origin points to be in the right spot. All right, next, we're going to uh, animate this. I'm just going to uh, change this to uh, 200 and make sure you're on frame zero for this. We're going to set up the animation by hitting I and location and then go to uh, 50 right here, I, location again. Make sure all of these are selected for this, that way you know all of them are being animated. Then uh, 25 right here, I'm just gonna move this up a little, hit I again, and so right now this is what's happening. That's it. I also want it to scale uh, a little as it goes up, so I'm gonna go back to zero right here. Um, also, to jump from keyframe to keyframe, you can just use the up and down arrows like that, which is pretty handy. So back on frame zero, uh, hit I and then scale, 50, I and scale, and then on 25, I'm just going to hit the period. Make sure you're, uh, you select individual origins right here, that way it scales co uh, correctly like that. And I'm going to uh, hit S to scale and then shift Z. So it's scaling on the X and the Y, but not the Z. And then you can just, uh, scale this down a little uh, and then I and scale so now this is what's happening 
like that. And I want this to cycle, that way it loops properly. So with all of these selected on your timeline, hit Control Tab, and this will go into the graph editor. I hit Normalize, and that just uh, makes all of them go between um, negative one and one. Um, it makes it a little easier to view all of them at the same time. You can hit N over here to open up this side panel, and then Modifiers, and add a Cycles modifier. And then you can hit this button right here to copy, and then paste. And you'll see it'll paste a second right, one right here, but don't worry about that. There's this little pop-up menu, and you want to hit Replace Existing, and that'll make it so there's only one over here. And you want to check off Only Active, and it'll add it to all of the other uh, keyframes that you have set also. So now when we go back with Control Tab and view it, it should just loop forever right here. And because uh, 50 is divisible by 200, once it gets to the end, it should loop seamlessly like that. Um, as long as you have it starting on zero, that is. Okay, so this is where the fun part starts. Um, you can hit N and go down to Commotion. With just all of the default stuff right here, we can just hit uh, Offset Animation. But before you do that, make sure you're on frame zero right here. So Offset Animation. And we already got something that's pretty interesting if we look through here. Um, it is a little unorganized though, so we can select everything, go back to frame zero, and we're just going to change the offset right here. This is the frame offset, so right now each of these objects is uh, offset, their animations are offset by one frame. And you can actually change this to something smaller, I'm going to change it to 0.1, like that. And hit offset again. So now you can tell that it's kind of starting in the center and rippling outward. And that's because we have it set to uh, sort by the cursor. So right now it's saying things that are close to the 3D cursor right here start first um, and, you know, kind of sort from there. So that's why it's rippling like that. Um, you can move the 3D cursor by shift and right click. So say if you wanted it to start from um, the corner over here, you can shift, right click, go back to frame zero, make sure you have all of these selected again. And you can hit offset animation again. And now it'll uh, start from that corner, just because that's where the th uh, 3D cursor is. Makes sense, right? One thing to mention about commotion is if you want to set all of these back to normal, you can actually do that pretty easily by just going back to frame zero once again. And for offset, change that to zero and hit offset animation. And it'll put everything back to normal like that, which is pretty handy if you change a lot of stuff and you know want to put it back to normal. You can also sort this by name so just you know it'll go in order like this. It'll start with that one and then this you know and just go in this order right here. Um, multi offset which maybe I'll cover in another video if that's something that interests people. Let's see what this looks like as random. Um, make sure everything is selected. Change offset back to point one and then offset animation. So this is just going randomly right now. Um, with everything selected, you can also you know achieve different effects by changing the um, interpolation right here. So select everything, hit T. Right now it's set to Bezier by default. You could change it to linear. Um, it looks just a little more rigid basically. Um, T. I like the way bounce looks. It's pretty dramatic. Um, this might be moving a little fast for that, so I'll set it back to Bezier. You can uh, move your camera back a little, something like that. So yeah, add some materials and lighting to this, and this is actually pretty close to um, the video that I showed in the beginning. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this, and share it with someone else if you found it helpful. Leave a comment if you have a suggestion for another video. I'll try to be uploading a little more regularly. That's all for now. See ya.